My name is Ray Comenzo. I'm a hematologist and uh, I have a special professional lifelong interest in plasma cell diseases. What I'm going to talk about in the next several minutes is newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. If you've had a prior diagnosis of smoldering myeloma and you've progressed to having active myeloma needing treatment, what I'm going to say will also apply to your case. If you're newly diagnosed with myeloma, you may have been diagnosed because you had back pain and a low red blood cell count and might even have had so much pain that you needed to go into the hospital. It's also possible that if you've just been diagnosed with myeloma, you've been told that your kidneys are damaged because of the protein the myeloma cells make. And it's also possible that you've been admitted to the hospital because of kidney damage. And in advanced cases, you may need dialysis for a brief period of time. These stories highlight the fact that multiple myeloma, although it is a bone cancer, causes damage to organs. And the organs that are damaged include bones, kidneys, the blood forming organ in the bone marrow, and the immune system. We are very fortunate today to have excellent tools for diagnosing and understanding each patient's myeloma. And also, we are very fortunate because we have new medicines that work extremely well. So, as you prepare to see your hematologist, the blood cancer doctor who will be taking care of you during the course of your therapy, there are several important questions which you need to formulate uh, and ask your hematologist. It's also important that at that first visit and at subsequent visits, you have someone go with you, your spouse, your friend, your son or daughter, your aunt, someone who may be knowledgeable about medical um, diagnoses and treatments, but more importantly, someone whom you feel comfortable with who can be your advocate as time passes. The most important questions to ask your blood cancer doctor, your hematologist, are what is the risk profile of my multiple myeloma? What are the best therapies for my multiple myeloma? How can you treat the damage that the myeloma has done to my bones or my kidneys? And is there a medicine that can be used to protect my bones? It's important to note that most multiple myeloma patients have myeloma that's genetically unstable but standard risk. That is to say, the myeloma does not proliferate rapidly and accumulate resistance to medicines very quickly. Patients with standard risk myeloma, and that's about 12, 75 to 80 percent of patients, do very well with standard therapies. Patients with high risk myeloma, that's one patient in five, may need more aggressive treatments to get the disease under control. The treatments that are given for myeloma depend in part on your age. So if you're over 65 years of age, one of the major therapies called stem cell transplant may be difficult for you to tolerate and may not be on the menu that your blood cancer doctor gives you. If you're younger than 65 years of age, stem cell transplant can be a very effective part of your treatment. It's also important when you meet with your blood cancer doctor to ask what the side effects of each drug uh, may be. The major drugs that are used to treat myeloma initially go by the names of bortezomib or Velcade lenalidomide or Revlimid. 
and dexamethasone. These three medicines together are extremely effective and can get the myeloma under control in the vast majority of patients. But they have side effects. Bortezomib, for example, in a small number of patients can cause neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, which in a very small number of patients can cause pain in the feet, numbness and tingling. If bortezomib is stopped, the neuropathy usually resolves. Lenalidomide or Revlimid can cause blood clots in a small fraction of patients. Therefore, aspirin is used to help thin the blood and prevent blood clots from forming. The third drug that's used, dexamethasone, is a steroid and helps bortezomib and lenalidomide do their work. It's also important to note that that first course of therapy, creating an interval of disease control, is extremely important. And when you sit down with your blood cancer doctor, your hematologist, you should ask, how long will the interval of my remission be? Do I need to be maintained with medicines to prevent the relapse that will occur? Do I need to receive the same doses of medicines that I received initially in the first course of therapy? Most patients nowadays can go anywhere from three to four, even five years with initial therapy before they need to change therapy. It's very important that the new medicines that are coming along in 2016 and 2017 also be used to help patients increase the duration of their first remission. That is really a key point and one worth discussing with your hematologist. So those are key issues related to newly diagnosed myeloma and I hope my thoughts have been helpful. Thank you.